All right, this video is for the two people that are going to watch it, <laughs> or all the way through, I should say. And uh, I'm still working on that adapter plug-in. Make sure it's in the light here. Let's me move my light a little closer to the camera. As you can see, I got quite a mess going here. And uh, every day I add a few wires, and I double and triple check everything. Uh, what's happening now is uh, I'm, I'm having to... Uh, add capacitors in parallel okay sometimes three this is a hundred picofarad at probably 600 volts um, I'm using what I got and I have two bigger ones these are uh, 53s 253s in parallel will be uh, in the area of the of the plate okay and uh, I went looking to buy some of this stuff that's in that circuit you know this circuit looks so innocent you know the bracket the bracket looks innocent to make and then it turns out you know how to improvise and the same with the circuit and I want to tell you while I remember that's why I do videos instead of one video I do several little ones um, they might be too long for you uh, but what I'm telling you is uh, you have to add a ground wire in the in the radio itself in the, or in the transmitter itself on uh, pin one okay you have to go in there and, and, and ground it you ground it to the next socket next to it pin one and pin six pin six isn't used so you can use that to bring your plate up from your connector it sits here and then you can make uh, some of these other uh, solder joints see this you got um, three different let's see one two three four four different wires have to tie to a point and uh, what I did was I bought the plate wire up to pin six all right so don't forget you need ground on pin one in this in the in transmitter you have to ground that so this has its ground and then uh, pin six can be used for your plate and a bunch of tie points otherwise you go nuts trying to get all these parts inside this little this little thing see uh, you know, that's as much as the guy gave you. This is how the old days were. In the old days, they give you the concept. Okay? They explain to you in doc doc documentation what you need. And people nowadays, they can't do that. The old days, what you did was you did a lot of reading. Okay? I want to tell you, I did not do a lot of reading as a kid. I dreaded it. And it's because of the ADD, this dyslexia, I told them, teachers, uh, principal, that when I look at a word, sometimes it reverses itself. I was explaining to them what I went through with dyslexia. And also another thing too is, I'm, as I'm reading a line of text, sometimes my eyes would go back to the left and come on the same line again. So I, I put my finger not on the line, under the words, under just in an area to help my eyeballs uh, know where to go, okay? So they could go line to line to line. And they kept stopping me from putting my finger on the page. Now, what really killed me is years later, speed readers would, would take their hands and go back and forth on the text. And that's that, it relaxes your eyes. So anyway, I had a lot of problems, but I, when it came to electronic text, an electronic problem project I only had certain books available uh, some of them my dad had bought uh, we had a subscription for a while to pop electronics and we saved the magazines and I would read those magazines over and over and over because there's a learning curve okay you got to know a certain amount of things just to make a circuit work now uh, there's always suggestions like a regenerative circuit the dressing of the wires and uh, keep them short as possible and the other thing too is uh, if the circuit doesn't oscillate make sure you reverse the tickler winding just reverse the wires and hope it works and that's usually makes it work anyway so over the years I would read text and I, I, I if you know me and followed my past videos that I deleted I went back on all the circuits that didn't work as a kid and figured out what went wrong in a lot of cases it was somebody that sold me the part 
would tell me it'll work and it wouldn't work and I figured out that it, ju it just would hit me I'd go back and get the circuit because uh, Popper Electronics is available online for free all the back issues as PDFs and I go back into those things and build the circuit. I built the regenerative uh, CB receiver, one transistor, it worked. It came right on and worked. And what was wrong there was the guy at the parts store was being nice. He gave me an eight ohm earphone and the circuit called for a 2000 ohm earphone because it was basically a, a transistor circuit operating as a high impedance tube circuit, okay? And it didn't work. And I, I tell you, I was really disappointed. I spent hours going over the wiring. And there was nothing that I did that was wrong. But I did not understand impedance. Okay. An earphone isn't an earphone isn't an earphone. Now, in some circuits, if there's an output transformer or a certain type of circuit, you could stick any earphone in and you'll get sound on the earphone. You might not get a lot of sound, but you'll still get sound. Where... In a regenerative circuit, that's basically um, with the tubes, that would be in the plate circuit. So 8 ohms, very little current would go through that 8 ohm uh, earphone. Plus it messes the tube up, makes the tube run too hot. In a regenerative um, tube circuit, uh, transistor circuit, uh, the same thing. Too much current going through, you could burn the transistor out. It won't oscillate. It was really, it was my birthday money. That I bought it. I built it on a nice little board. I still had the parts here in the parts bins, and I went back and got those parts out, put it together. It came right on, knowing that I needed a 2000 ohm uh, earphone, and I could have used a little miniature transformer. But these are the things you go through. And the old timers, they write these articles. And I want to tell you, I wrote an article. I wrote two articles, three articles, whatever. They cut them down to publish, they cut out some of your words. So, there's, there's little little uh, chunks, don, donut holes of information that's actually missing. And I have to go over this a few more times and see if they mention. See, they show the ground on pin 1. But it's not on the transmitter. Pin 1 isn't grounded. And it might be in the text. And it might have been donut holed. But I stayed with this and uh, I got most of the parts. And uh, I went online I started trying to order some of these parts. And uh, a 600 volt capacitor... Uh, probably Mauser might have it, but everybody else, no. Uh, eBay, yes, if you want to buy 10 of them. Okay, these are the problems that are modern. And that's why when those guys in the group said, oh, we don't need Radio Shack anymore. We got online, blah, 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 blah. Well, the problem is online, uh, except for like Mauser, uh, wants to sell you 10 of everything. Okay, so it, it, online isn't that great Compar compared to when Radio Shack was Radio Shack. And you could just walk in there and pay them uh, 79 cents for two capacitors in a little blister pack. Okay? And so people go, oh, they're only a dime capacitor. They're selling two for 79. Arr, 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 arr. Yeah. Okay. But what about the convenience? Okay? You need the part. You go to Radio Shack. By the end of the day, you got the circuit working versus ordering it online or ordering it and waiting, paying the shipping. Okay? You could tell these guys that shoot this stuff off. Never build anything. Because when you're a builder, you really want the parts right away because it's, it's an addiction. Okay? It's totally an addiction. Now, I, I always tell you, I go walking. I'm going to go off in, on a tangent here. I go walking, and it has nothing to do with the circuit. I just wanted to tell you some of the things I experience in life. Uh, I go walking. I walk around the neighborhood. I clean up the neighborhood. And uh, New Year's Eve, it was pretty good. I, I do have a giant... Uh, cable TV spool down in the in wet muddy ground in the, a gully a water catching gully uh, The kids took all the, the, the stones out that break the water From digging in they moved them and made a dam out of them So they all have to be put back But the spool is down in muddy land and it's a big cable TV spool like it's on the back of the truck and Someone might have used it as furniture Or the kids just found it rolled it down. So I have to roll that bad baby up. And that's a six-foot diameter spool and there's also a big cardboard box the other day uh, there was some snow on the uh, on the grass in the gully and I guess the kids were trying to uh, sled using the boxes and they left them all there and that's the stuff I go around and pick up but um, there was this one woman that someone noticed was missing I noticed she was missing I also noticed this other guy that 
died. We found out he died. They were trying to keep it a secret. I found out he died. So this other woman disappeared. And uh, I went around asking about her. And basically, nobody knows anybody around here. They know me, okay? But anyway, didn't see the woman. So I was coming up the street, and I, I spotted her all the way down the other end. I go walking right towards her. I start telling her, you know, we missed you. I haven't seen you. I haven't talked to you, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, she, she said it was too hot for her during the summer. So anyway, she goes off. Now, yesterday, I'm walking along, and she pulls her car off the road. And she says, I just wanted to tell you that meant a lot to me that you cared that I was missing and not helping. I said, yeah, I said, that's how I am. I said, what's the point of living if you don't get along with people, if you don't know who anybody is? I said, I, don't, I don't really don't understand this neighborhood. Uh, there are certain people that talk to me, but they don't want to, well, anyway, so I just, so she took off, and then I go around, I come out the other side, and I, I stop, and I talk to one of my friends, he's from Kenya, come here alone, he's like nine years old, and he starts saying, you know, people really think a lot about you, he says, they might not like you, but they have a lot of respect for you, and whenever I see you, I always smile, because I know you're out there trying to help people, well, that made me feel nice. The two people within a short period of time saying, you know, blah, blah, blah. and then other people walking up to me and wishing me a happy new year and how am I doing? Okay, so I did get that yesterday. I did get a little feedback from people. Uh, it, it, it was pretty funny, but I realized something. The people that walk around and try to get you to believe in Jesus, uh, it's like a, I won't say it's a game with them, but it's an ego thing. They want to convince you that Jesus exists and, that, and you, they, you'll, you'll come to church with them. And, and I'm like, you know what? I'm doing like a totally different thing. I just like people. And sometimes when you, you stop and talk to someone, it's a big mistake. Okay? Uh, but sometimes, you know, they tell you about stuff you don't know is around. They'll go, you know that up in that back road up there, there's a blah, blah, blah place. And you're like, really? And then you go check it out. And uh, it's you're like, I didn't know that it was even there. You miss stuff. Like there's a, a pond up on, um, off of um, Horseshoe Road and Newport. Horseshoe and Newport? Yeah, Horseshoe and Newport. And I keep, the people here to fish, I said, did you ever go up to that pond? It looks pretty big. I could see it on Google. And they're just staring at me. It's like maybe two miles from here, straight line, then maybe four walking. And they're like, no, I said, there's a, a there's an aviator, 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 there, the bird sanctuary, aviator, a, 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 aviator, uh, a, a, I, I can't remember the word, it's too early in the morning, well, anyway, yeah, some of the weird stuff, man, I'm like, I pay attention more when people are talking, and I realize they don't know the names of the streets here, and they admit it, they said, I, I really don't know the names of the streets, and I'm like, oh, man, and then they, they point, when they're talking to me, they point in the wrong direction. And that always makes it hard for me. And then, uh, and everything curves here, which makes it very difficult to understand which direction stuff really is in. They basically point where they're standing, where they have to start driving their car from. And it's, it's it, you stand there like, okay, they're pointing up to that light to go right, to go up to that area. But they can't really point from this area to where that thing is. They don't have a sense of direction because all the roads in Pennsylvania are curved. But it's pretty amazing stuff. The things that go through my head when I'm working on these projects. But as an old timer, this is what they give you. And then I noticed on those 700 videos that I had up that I took down, people would ask me the dumbest questions. And uh, it's because they don't want to read. They want you to tell them the answer. And when I'm watching other people's videos, uh, I see them in the comments section, ask, uh, and it, it never gets answered. Other people just, they ignore people. I don't like ignoring people. I basically would tell them where to go look for the information. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be Google for them. Okay. But people do that as a control. They make, they think they're greater than they are. And rather than go look it up themselves, they're going to ask the person they expect an answer back. And I stopped doing that uh, because I got tired of the nonsense because they're shooting from the hip. They're never going to follow up on it. They're just playing make-believe. And once I learned how many people are playing make-believe, uh, that's when I changed a lot. You know, they say you got to learn the lesson. You keep making the same mistake over and over until you learn the lesson. I learned there's a lot of people out there 
that when they're in a group of people, they're, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. They don't do anything, okay? And I don't like to talk about what I'm working on because people have no idea what the hell I'm saying. So I say, I'll just say, they'll say, what do you, yeah, I got another electronic project I'm working on. That's it. I'm building something. I don't get sp specific because they don't understand. I say, no, I'll keep myself busy. You know, and I, I, like I had one guy I was talking to and I said, uh, yeah, certain mornings, uh, I eat Cheerios every morning and I uh, would have banana, but not every morning. There's mornings where I have candy cakes or I'll buy pinwheels. And I tell people this all the time. They're always shocked. Like, what do you mean pinwheels? And yeah, yeah. I get up in the morning and uh, I, I get out of bed some mornings. I'm like, well, at least I have pinwheels this morning or candy cakes, you know, because when you're retired and you're by yourself, uh, you, you don't even have to get out of bed. Okay, nobody cares. So I tell him, I said, yeah, once a, while, uh, once a week, uh, I'll buy something that's not Cheerios and a banana for breakfast. And it's, it, I said, that morning, I don't have trouble getting out of, be out of bed because I know I can go have cheer um, uh, candy cakes or a thing. And they're like, that's really bad for you. I said, well, what exactly do you eat? Eggs and bacon. Okay, we won't go there. I said, you know, I think if you look at the uh, actual ingredients for candy cakes, Versus greasy bacon, okay? Uh, I think the candy cakes actually win, okay? And that's what I said, I was telling the one guy. And uh, I said, one of my favorite candies is the, those cherries with the liquid in them, the chocolate cherries. He goes, that's basically cough syrup co covered with chocolate. He doesn't like it, it's too sweet. I like them. And I buy them once in a while because it's a treat for myself. You know, why be alive if you don't treat yourself? But uh, I just wanted to tell you, you know, and when it comes to something like this, you know, uh, this might not be your cup of tea the first time. But like I said, this video is for the two people that tune in to see how this is coming along. Now, the switch is all wired in. The two crystals are uh, socket wired in. Okay. And there's not a lot of room in there. Okay. And then the fact that I have to, uh, you know, parallel some capacitors this is going in the grid circuit okay because these aren't that high a voltage and if they short out no fire will break out and then these big guys here two of these go in parallel they go up in the plate circuit as 100 picofarads they're like 53 each 53 picofarads each there's just silver micas i have a whole crap load of these uh and this this goes also in the grid circuit this is two tens in parallel to give me 20 picofarads and uh, you can see the two, I don't know if you can see the two resistors here in series. Uh, they, they have some really weird values. You know, 72K and uh, 27K. And uh, they're not exactly uh, very common um, resistors. And the other thing too is uh, if you put two quarter watt resistors in series, they still add to a half watt. Plus this, this one here... I think this, yeah, this is on the grid circuit. It's across the crystal. Um, it, you don't need full, uh, you don't need a full half watt there. And then uh, the, I'll, I'll do two resistors in series uh, for the one that, that sits in the uh, screen. Okay, the plate gets direct voltage. And then, oh, and then for the, um, there's RF chokes, 2.5 millihenry, right? Millihenry, not microhenry. 2.5 millihenry chokes. I'm going to have to put two one mil henry's in series and that's the best i can do i did find a circuit where they use one mil henry chokes and that's just to keep the rf from going the wrong places uh the goal is to get the thing to oscillate and i'm going to be using this tube when you plug this tube in this adapter it'll oscillate uh without a screen but uh, uh this, uh, this actually circuit actually uh requires a different tube it runs a little bit more with more gain and they say the reason they use that tube was it works better on sluggish crystals, okay? Uh, when you, you buy crystals in the surplus market back then, some of the crystals were real high quality. And then some of them were, like they say, sluggish. They need a little bit more kick to oscillate. So when you're, you're keying the oscillator on and off, uh, it might not come on during one of the dits or dahs, okay? So in other words, uh, by using a better, a better tube with more gain, a more modern tube, uh, that problem wouldn't happen. Now, in my case, I'm not going to be turning the oscillator on and off. I'm going to be keying um, the output tube's um, uh, screen. Okay, I'm not going to be keying the oscillator on and off. That that causes uh, uh, some chirping. 
Uh, other chirping is caused by uh, the oscillator not being regulated. Okay, so when your power amp turns on and off, uh, the voltage drops on the oscillator and it causes a shift in frequency. And that shift in frequency, when it goes through the air and gets beaded with the beat frequency oscillator at the other side, causes a chirp because it's shifting in free frequency. So I read up on how to stop the chirping. And um, a lot of people just say keep the oscillator running all the time and then regulate it. And the reason they didn't do that on an aircraft during World War II is you don't want the oscillator on during radio silence. Okay, uh, there's back in the World War II days they had the uh, antenna arrays and receivers that could actually pick up an oscillator of an approaching aircraft if it was leaking out, if that was leaky. And uh, that's why uh, the BC-348 has an extra amplifier on the antenna. And that's to keep the oscillator from uh, leaking out onto the antenna and telling the enemy the, the squadron is coming. So there's a lot to this. And like I said, uh, uh, this, this video with all its components are basically for the two people that follow my videos. <laughs> you know, what can I tell you? You know, uh, I don't put a real uh, attractive uh, 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 thumbnail up there. You know, it, the, an aircraft looks like it's crashing into a house, and then when you you basically uh, watch the video, that that was just a fake picture. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of those lately. I'm seeing a lot of short videos. They load you up with commercials, and then you watch a 50 second uh, video, and then when you go to the next video, there's two more commercials again. That's what it's all about. Uh, YouTube is switching over to be like TikTok, and these long videos that I'm doing, uh, they'll discourage them in the future. You know, and like I said, this uh, building this converter or this uh, uh, oscillator plug-in, so you can operate this transmitter as an amateur with a with a bottom end license. Okay, uh, in other words, this is old school. This is how they did it, and uh, you know, I still have to do the power supply. So buying this transmitter, I bought it for like forty bucks, and then they're shipping. I bought two of them uh, to make one. And the whole, the whole project has been bad right from the beginning, the concept of it. And uh, the only thing good last year was this light here. Here's my light. Okay. This is, this is, this is of all of last year, the only thing that turned out that I bought was this light. Man, I can get this into, into, into areas. Because as you get older, uh, your eyesight, you know, you can wear glasses, but you need to have a certain amount of light uh, to be able to solder, to get into spaces like this. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been quite a new year here, and uh, yeah, those two people caught me off guard yesterday. It really meant a lot to me that you, oh man, but I, that's what I do. I said to the woman, that's what I do. I go around and see how people are doing, because, you know, you, you, you treat people, it's the golden rule, but it's actually in the Bible. I won't preach to you. Uh, it's Luke 631. Okay, well anyway, it's in the Bible, and in other words, you treat people the way you want to be treated even if they don't treat you the way you want to be treated. And after a while, you get to know a lot of people. And it just makes the day better. When you can go out for a walk and bump into someone and actually talk to you, you know, you talk about your, your, your anxieties or things that bother you, and they talk about the things that bother them. And that you know, that's what people are all about. But nobody's really doing that anymore. Everybody's uh, one up on the other person. Uh, everybody's uh, texting each other. It's That part of it's missing. So when I go out there and talk to certain people, they're missing that. And that's where religious people can promise you certain things. Uh, you're going to have the human touch or the human experience through a religious group. But in the end, they want your money. Okay, it's that simple. But they're, they're giving you something you're being deprived of. And uh, I bump into people that have a bad marriage. And that's a whole other can of worms. You know, and then I come home and I, this is what I do. To get away from it all okay and i build stuff as soon as it works sometimes this goes in a drawer somewhere or in a bin okay that's what you got to understand about me and you say why is he why do you build so much stuff how do you know how to do it well i've been doing this stuff since i don't know if it was seven or eight years old building stuff you know for my birthday going getting a a, a ck722 a ck7 ck7222 uh look it up it's a transistor uh it was three dollars and forty nine cents when I bought my first one. When I bought my last one, 
uh, before I went to like the modern uh, silicon transistors, it was like 98 cents. Same place, Burger Electronics, Bloomfield Avenue, Bloomfield Avenue, and Watts Sessing in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Uh, there's no mention of Burger anywhere on the internet. Cy Burger, and he had a TV um, supply place. It was an RCA dealer. And that, that's the other thing that kills me. You know, all these people that are mentioned on the internet that are nobodies. And you had a guy like that providing parts for all the servicemen in the area. And not a, not a mention of the guy. That, that, that kills me too. You know, you go look at uh, even the simplest stuff. Uh, like you, you read about the, the town I grew up in. And I would mention certain people that had like a candy store as a kid. You know, what became of her. You know, nobody cares. They don't care. They only cared that she was there to sell them candy or a yo-yo or, you know, me, that was a, that, the one woman, named, her name was Julie. I don't know her last name. And I would walk a, a half a mile away from my candy store just to go to her candy store because she was always smiling. She'd ask you, how you're doing? She seemed truly interested in you because even after you bought your candy, she still keep talking to you. How school? I noticed this, or I know, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, that you, you have memories of certain people that, you know, even though you were a kid, they were actually seemed to be interested in what you were doing, uh, other than the pedophiles. That's another story for another time. I think that's it. All right, that's it.